Hey everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Baboom. Uh, I want to get down to the meat of this. I want you to love Warhammer 40k the same way that I love Warhammer 40k. Um, you hear a lot about other science fiction universes like Star Wars and Star Trek, and they're mainstream. They are. This isn't this isn't a battle between what is mainstream and what's necessarily considered good. I'm just giving you the reasons why I think Warhammer 40k is probably one of the greatest science fiction universes that you can ever really get into. The thing is, with things like Star Wars and Star Trek, they're pretty predictable. You have this force of good that tries to conquer over the force of bad and they end up usually succeeding because of some kind of hero or something like that and that does that does happen in 40k on 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 more than one occasion it has definitely happened where someone badass comes along and they totally change how a fight happens and and things just go downhill for the bad guys I'm not necessarily rooting for the bad guys here, but that's the thing. Warhammer 40k has it set to where everyone's pretty much on equal playing fields. Uh, you have in Star Wars and Star Trek the the bad guys uh, who who or, or like in Star Wars that are oh only hate is going to give you your power whereas you know the Jedi they they're calm and and they love things and they're eventually going to win and it's not it's not like that at all and then you have in Star Trek of course you have the occasional action but they try and sort things out with diplomacy in 40k there's no time for diplomacy diplomacy was tried diplomacy failed absolutely failed and they have not forgiven each other for like 10,000 years. Um, Warhammer 40k is an absolutely brutal universe where everyone is constantly fighting for the most simple foothold that they can get. If it gives them even an inch against another faction, they are willing to risk, risk their lives for it. Um... And by brutal, I mean absolutely uh, unforgiving. There, there's everything in this universe wants to kill you. Everything in this universe wants to destroy something, or uh, destroy it as a consequence for another action. Like there's, there's planets that are so dedicated to being a factory. They're called forge worlds. And these factory planets are as big as Jupiter, if not even larger. And imagine from the North Pole down to the South Pole, even the oceans are covered in factories. These forge worlds are dedicated to doing nothing but creating ammunition and guns and tanks and jets and a whole bunch of other kind of stuff that they would possibly need in order for the war effort of that faction to keep doing what they're doing. It's just unforgiving. They need that. They need those Forge Worlds in order to just survive. And it's gotten to the point where survival is war. So this universe actually has this, this great mixture of they're not just fighting because that's war and that's what they do. They're fighting because it's survival. The other factions straight up just want to get rid of the rest of them. So you have to fight. And other aspects of this universe, other than the actual war scenes themselves, you can actually just Google image and find some amazing pieces of artwork that have been done where there's just these massive battlefields and, and sometimes you're going to find artwork that's done where it's two heroes fighting each other and, and they're decked out with tons of of weapons and trophies and uh and emblems and everything everything's just so detailed and fleshed out i love it i absolutely adore it um to get back to the point of how brutal this universe is can you imagine in our time 
uh, kind of using prisoners that are in death sentence after they die. That's what they do in 40k. They take the skull with the brain and sometimes an eye intact and stuff like that. And they turn it kind of into a personal assistant. Like it, it keeps track of specific dates and times and all this other kind of stuff so the marines themselves don't have to. And it's not necessarily, I guess, a, a means for them to do it just because the prisoner is on death row. They're doing it because resources are scarce. So you might as well put a perfectly good brain to use, right? And by the time that they have, or the skull has worked out its, uh, its time or its punishment, that's when they'll actually, you know, put it to rest. They'll kill it and, and all right, fine. He's worked off the shit that he did that was really bad and of course it takes forever in this universe to do anything similar to that um but you're actually going to see that in a bit because there's actually a video that i that i want you guys to see that actually has a servitor and you can actually see what i'm talking about they're like little floating skulls and they have like laser eyes and they scan things and stuff they're just little serpents anyway it is so brutal in this science fiction universe that the soldier morale can get so low that it is perfectly acceptable for a higher up within that platoon or within that grouping whatever you want to call it to just shoot one of his own soldiers not out of being pissed at them entirely then you got to be a little pissed at the guy but if everyone's trying to run from the fight, let's say there's a serious fight going on and these people want to run. How disrespectful is it for you to run from a fight that could essentially turn the tides for the rest of the people that are depending on you to fight? So, fuck you. I'm going to shoot one of you. Go back on the fucking field and fight. And that's what they do. If soldier morale's really scared and low, they'll actually shoot one of the soldiers just to give just to give them some type of adrenaline boost. So they're like, well, I don't want to be fucking shot. I better start fucking fighting. You know, it's it's absolutely unforgiving. If anyone were to say, hey Bob, if you could be in any science fiction universe ever for one day, I would not want to be in 40k. I will pick any other science fiction universe over 40k. 40k will absolutely destroy you. Not just outright kill you because there's always going to be some other kind of bullshit that will either torture you or make sure that your pain lasts. And in there's just a constant struggle in this universe. I love it. Now one of the big things, actually the biggest thing that 40k has going for it, are the Space Marines. The Space Marines are your big hulking dudes. Um, they tend to range normally at about 9 feet tall. They are genetically modified human beings. They used to be regular people, and they went kind of through a screening process. And that screening process is very strict. It, it requires you to be physically adept. There's no way they're just going to hook up any guy with these awesome mega genetics. It's not going to happen. In fact, most people who actually become space marines only have like a 2% chance of survival. Most people who sign up or, or get allowed to be a space marine they don't survive it. There's too much shit going through their system. The, their bone structure is reworked. Their, their liver and a whole bunch of organs are reworked. They're given like, I forgot, what was it? 19 extra organs? They're given a second heart, another pair of lungs. They tried uh, in this universe 
to design the perfect soldier that in any instance a soldier can survive on their own. It even got to the point where they're like, okay, well, let's say they're on an alien planet and they want to eat food and they don't know what any of this stuff is. Guess what? They have a second stomach and they can actually produce saliva that's a little bit like acid so it can break down. It's pretty acidic. So it can actually break down uh, a lot of unknown substances and probably turn it into nourishment. There was even one case where one space marine was in shackles and he bit at the, uh, the chains that he had and he was able to get free because they weren't expecting them to have a very acidic saliva. And these space marines weigh roughly 600 or more pounds. I mean, they are pure muscle, very, very, very low body fat, if any at all. They constantly train. It's, it gets to the point where they pretty much, uh, what's the word, uh, get rid of, every, I can't think of the word, they, uh, they get rid of all of your memories. Or most of them. They try to. They brainwash you. That's the word. Why couldn't I think of it? Maybe I'm brainwashed myself. They brainwash you. And they they hook you up to a machine every day. And it constantly does training regimes. Goes over rules with you. Books. What the Codex says to do. The Codex is like their, their rules of war. I guess. Right? And they turn these, these people into just these military machines. And it's funny that these are the most common soldiers in 40k. When you're when, when you're thinking of an opposing army in a science fiction universe, you're usually thinking of something that's probably around the same size as you, maybe sometimes a little bit larger. But in 40k, we're talking about creatures and things that can span to as big as a skyscraper. How do you compete with that? You need soldiers that are big. You need guns that are big. The average space marine carries around a 70 caliber assault rifle. This assault rifle is by cannon. Sometimes it could be messed with, but by cannon, it is 70 caliber, fully automatic, depleted uranium, armor piercing, explosive rocket propelled rounds. I know this sounds really stupid. But you need, you need something that is going to kill something. And trust me, the things in 40k don't like being screwed with. They don't. So you need something that will kill them. And this is their basic assault rifle. This is something that they carry around two-handed. Because if you were to try and fire something like that as a regular human being, you would probably break your arm. And yes, there are videos of that. If you were to calculate the size of how big a 70 caliber would be to uh, a real gun. There are some people out there that have actually tried to make that into a real gun for personal use. And I don't, do you have them on vehicles and stuff? Trust me, those things are definitely real, but you have some people out there that try to make their own personal gun and they can only fire it like once before they have to take a break. It's, it's big, the recoil's big, the bullet's big. So, uh, imagine a fully automatic, essentially imagine a fully automatic rocket launcher with armor piercing rockets. They're rocket propelled shots because worrying about shells a lot of the time is kind of uh, unnecessary. It takes up a lot of resources. In this universe, it's all about the resources. It's all about making sure you don't waste things. It's all about making sure that everything is put to some kind of use for a war effort. So why not just make everything self-contained in the bullet itself, right? Or the projectile. Anyway, one of the biggest threats to these space marines and pretty much every other possible faction in this universe out of the eight or nine factions that are there is the warp the warp is essentially uh the the evil i guess if you want to call it the, the evil right the warp is a collection 
of all living things, desires, hates, loves, a whole bunch of shit. Like, imagine if every single possible emotion, like fear, the desire to kill, a whole bunch of other kind of stuff, just kind of manifested in another dimension. That is what the warp is. And eventually, it just got so strong. It built up so much over the thousands and millions and billions of years that was going on that it created beings. And these beings, uh, they try and leak into the real world and they, they just, they want to indulge in on whatever the emotion is that they feed off of. So imagine, I'm dead serious here, imagine a creature that was manifested out of tons of sexual energy. If it were to come into the real world, it would probably try and rape and gorge every possible thing ever. And uh, the only thing that can stop it is either enough guns or something, right? And it just constantly happens in this universe. Um, the One of the things that can get kind of iffy with it, other than the warp itself, are psychers. Psychers are pretty much your psychic people. They do all the, the magic quote unquote magic stuff that you can think of. They make force fields. They can they can create fire and all this other kind of stuff. But the problem is is that they're using kind of their ability to to manifest the warp, the very evil thing they're trying to beat in the first place. The warp doesn't actually have uh uh I guess allegiance with itself. There are people that can manipulate the warp and use it for themselves and then use it to fight other beings from the warp. But in that process, they have, they're, they're open up to the dangers of the warp themselves and can actually become demons themselves. So, yeah, I'm not really a big fan of the psychers. I like tons of the guns, the mechs. But mostly, I like how just unforgiving the science fiction universe is. I, I love it. Uh, one of the big games that's coming out, they don't have a release date yet. I'm one of the people that, that would rather wait for a very well-polished game than uh, try and rush release dates because we, we all know that can, that can be real bad. But at the same time, you don't want another Duke Nukem Forever, which, by the way, I did actually finish that game. I don't know anyone else that actually finished it. So, as far as I know, I am the only person on the planet that actually beat Duke Nukem Forever. Good lord. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the game is called Space Hulk Deathwing. It's made by some devs that I know and love. I don't know them personally, but they're called Stream On. Or Stream On, however you want to pronounce it. Um... Originally, there were like eight guys in a development studio. They loved Warhammer 40k, and they worked on a game called I, Divine Cybermancy. And I have maybe 250 hours in that game. It's one of my most favorite ones on Steam. Um, best dollar I've ever spent. It's a first-person shooter that is heavily artistically inspired by 40k, but doesn't take anything directly. It has heavy RPG elements to it, but it is not turn-based whatsoever. It is... A first-person shooter using the Source Engine that is a lot of things that I would love in a first-person shooter. Lots of customization, different ways to play, a whole bunch of other kind of stuff to approaching things on the map. And they know what they're doing. They, they know what they're doing when it comes to uh, something that's a little bit outside of the box. And... I'm really hoping for that with this new Warhammer 40k game, Space Hulk Deathwing. This is not a sponsorship. I'm not out there trying to tell you to buy it or anything like that. Because I know tons of people out there are like, Well, what games are you excited for, Bob? You're so critical on them and a whole bunch of other kind of stuff. That's one of them. If you also want to look at what kind of games I enjoy, I also enjoy the Earth Defense Force games, EDF. EDF 4.1 just came out on Steam. It was on PlayStation 4 for the longest time. Uh, it's a game about pretty much just being a regular foot soldier on the battlefield and your planet is attacked by aliens and these aliens have massive bugs. Like, I mean, giant ants, giant spiders, 
dragons, giant robots with guns, a whole bunch of other kind of stuff that's going on in it. It is a fantastically fun game. The physics engine goes everywhere. But uh, that's something that I've been playing recently. Um, there is a handful of games that I am excited, excited for. And I want you to at least be somewhat interested in Space Hulk Deathwing. I want you to look at some gameplay. I want you to look at a trailer for it. I want you to maybe maybe even go on the forums like I did and look at it. Um, I am excited for this. I've been waiting for this. And I am not really excited for Dawn of War 3, but that is a discussion for another day. Um, by the way, this video is actually a mod for Left 4 Dead 2. This is actually a Warhammer 40k mod for Left 4 Dead 2. They changed all the zombies to Gene Stealers and everything else is 40k. The map is custom, etc, etc. And I, I love it. This is a good mod. Um, although it's very short. There's only like two maps. Anyway, uh, I'm going to leave you to the trailer. So please, or not the trailer, but the gameplay footage. Please enjoy. Peggy 16. Welcome to Space Hulk Deathwing, the new FPS from Stromont Studios set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Being developed on Unreal 4, Space Hulk Deathwing is an FPS with tactical elements based on the Space Hulk tabletop game. Infiltrate the Space Hulk, huge collections of various derelict spaceships, debris and asteroids often mashed together, drifting throughout space. You would explore these Space Hulks as a librarian along with a squad of either AI or other players of the Deathwing, the elite first company of the Dark Angels Space Marine chapter. Seek out relics and explore the architecture and technology from the creators of these massive ships. With a story co-written by renowned Dark Angels author Gav Thorpe, Easter eggs are hidden around every corner. In swarms, gene stealers are powerful creatures, but no match for a Terminator squad when alone. They're heavily reliant on pack tactics and other strategies like ambush, encirclement, and tactical retreats to slowly chip your life away. As for your squad, locking doors behind you will slow the gene stealer advance, keeping the swarms manageable for your squad. Each mission will have you exploring a different ship, with environments built based on actual spaceships from the lore. They each have different layouts and aesthetics based on their owners. Space Hulk Deathwing features an arsenal of famous weapons from the universe, as well as new creations. Pick the right loadout that suits you and remember to work as a team. Damage against you is localized. If you take too much damage to the right hand, for example, you won't be able to use your Storm Bolter or weapon equipped to that slot. As you progress deeper and deeper into the Space Hulk, you'll meet variations of our dangerous foe. One such variation is the hybrid gene stealers that use light and heavy weaponry looted from the Space Hulk, such as the Rocket Launcher. Another lethal foe is the Brood Lord, the ultimate product of gene stealer evolution. It'll take all your teamwork to overcome. We look forward to revealing more about Space Hulk Deathwing over the coming months. Thanks for watching.